Hey hey hey, Great Figure Man here. Um, this is the April wallpaper calendar video. I do apologise for the delay in getting it out. Uh, originally I was going to do a cool Easter theme with these um, pastelly vibrant coloured eggs. Uh, but unfortunately I sold out before I could get my hands on them. And then were into my wrist. Uh, so it's kind of pushed me back a bit further. Um, however, I asked on my Instagram stories a while ago about using these little wee crow um, gacha figures and how I could use them in a photo and quite a few people recommended 16 which I feel is definitely the perfect mix so here's a chance to combine these crows with 16 with some sakura um, blossoms and try and create a cool spring sakura hanami type of a um, image okay so that's the quick run and what we're going to do uh, so let's get everything that we're going to use for the photo and start creating it Okay, so you might recognize the green base here from the, uh, I think it was the last video I used it in actually. Um, so we're going to get it out again this time for the base, the grass, the uh, kind of like a field look here. Um, the image I have in my head is kind of going with what the show did had, I think it was 16 with the two androids. He was sitting on a rock with a couple of the birds on his shoulder and one of his hand. So we're going to try and do that. So for the rocks going to use the Tamashi Rock Effects. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll not sure if we'll use both the grey and the brown or beige um, but for now we'll probably just start with the beige and see if that is enough. If we need some more or want to scatter some around to add a bit more depth and detail then I'll get these ones out. I've also got this rubble effect from uh, Prezza uh, so I might be able to get some of these, place them in the foreground. I'm not really sure if this will work too well as a rock substitute uh, but if it's not in focus, it might um, lend itself to being a good effect. So we'll give that a shot later. And of course, to go with 16, we've got the last year's event edition 1718. Uh, so we'll try and get these two in the shot as well. Probably just sitting or leaning on, leaning on the rock with 16. And if we need a bit more texture, I've got this decoration moss and these mossy um, green balls, uh, which might be able to lay around. And finally, uh, this is actually just a random freebie from the supermarket, um, just a pop out sakura tree. Might be able to pop these out in the background here to, again, add a bit more depth and detail to the image and really lend itself to the sakura um, spring vibe. So what we're going to do now, we're going to pop these guys out of their box and start setting up in the middle of the um, table here. And we'll, and we'll try and get a feel for how the image is looking, what we need to do. Okay, so we've got 16 here set up. We've got the Tamashi rocks in the um, center, uh, making kind of a boulder in place for him to put his foot on. Uh, since this is just a temporary setup, I've got a stand here just holding um, 16 up and some blue tech underneath his foot because it was a bit iffy to get the right balance. And I've kind of just scattered the crows around him uh, just to try and get a feel for the look. Uh, so I'll take a quick test shot now. We'll check it up on the screen and we'll have a look at what it looks like. Okay, so after looking at the photo, I'm pretty happy with having 16 kind of standing here um, with one foot up on a rock and one hand on his knee with the other holding a crow. Um, the background is very white and we're going to do something about that in a moment. Um, and then for the foreground around here, I might set up some extra props to give it a bit more detail. Uh, so yeah, let's first take care of the background. Okay, so now we've got the background here. Um, what I've done is just gone to Google, searched for anime sakura wallpaper, and I found one that I thought that would look good, um, blurred out in the background. Printed on two A3 sheets of paper, stuck them together, and taken them to this white background. Now let's take a photo with this background in and compare the difference. Okay, so this is looking a lot better now. Uh, it's giving a lot more detail in the background. It's really filling in the vibe and ambience of the shot. Uh, these loose sakura here, kind of in the way. Uh, I'm not really sure what we're going to do with them exactly yet. Might be able to put a couple facing each direction to add a bit more 
detail but since it's down quite low it might be a bit too strong um, alternatively you might pop each petal off and just kind of throw some in the air when you take the photo uh, to simulate kind of the floating um, petals so we'll see how this will work out towards the end for now we'll move it off to the side and I think I might get out um, 18 and 17 see if we can fit them in the scene as well okay so I've got 18 and 17 set up in the image now I'm going with 18 straddling the rock with her hand up and just 17 just standing there chilling with his arms behind his back you'll notice that all three of them are all lined up with each other now the reason for that is I want to do as little editing as possible due to my injured wrist uh, so by having them all next to each other when I take one photo and focus on 16, 17 or 18 all three are going to be in focus so for example we've got Broly here if I put him next to these guys, he's going to be in focus. But if I move him closer towards the camera, he's going to get blurry. And if I go further away, he'll get blurry as well. Uh, so when you have the figures and you've got them in different locations, normally what you have to do is take multiple images and focus stack them, aka blend them in Photoshop. So to avoid that, it's a bit boring, but all three are lined up together. And by doing this, it means I can have a background nice and blurry, since I don't want to be a main focus, just a little bit extra detail and texture in the background. So now that all three of these are sort of set up here, take a photo, have a look at it, and then we'll start adding on the extra elements to our image, and then remove the stand and try and get everyone in their correct poses for the final image. Okay, so you'll notice I've placed these little wee fake trees at the back here. Uh, these are just little wee two-part ones that just slot in to each other. Uh, so I've placed these in the back here in just a couple of different spots to see if they look good. Um, ideally, they're going to be blurred out just enough so you won't be able to tell the shape of them properly. And all that they're fake trees. Um, but you'll see just enough that it should give it a little bit more of that detail, a little bit more depth. Uh, so we'll try and make a couple of different positions, see if it actually looks good. It may turn out that actually it looks horrible, so we'll just get rid of them. Um, but if it looks good, hopefully we'll just give it a little bit extra, um, something, something that the image will need. So I'll put them in, I believe the best position is going to be like right behind, where you can't really see too much. So we'll take a photo and see what it looks like. Okay, so you'll see that the photo with these in does look a little bit better. Um, so for the final image, we'll do an image with them and without. That way once everything's set up, we can decide at that last moment if it's better with or without. At the moment, I'm still living on my fence. I feel like it is quite good. But maybe the positioning, if it's more off to the side, might look a bit better. So we'll have we play around with the final image. But for now, we'll leave them directly behind. Okay, so the next step is we're going to take a little wee miscellaneous objects, try and place them around the side here, and try and give the image a bit more detail and um, interest. So let's do that now. Okay, so I took the green boulders and kind of placed them in the back here with some of this rubble kind of in underneath to make it look like a, say, rocky outcrop with some um, green grassy boulders essentially on them. Uh, it's further back in my image so it's going to be slightly blurred so the detail won't be there just it will give a little bit of extra interest in the background to really bring the image together so what I've done is just place the circle of petals around the back just to break up the green a little bit more uh, I did try throwing them try and get that caught in the wind look uh, but the size is a bit too big and it was too much of a distraction uh, you might be able to get the right quantity with a lot of trial and error um, but I feel like for this image, I want the main focus to be on the three androids. I guess A for April is Android in this case. And yeah, it should work out really well. So I'm going to take the final image in a moment. But before I do, I'll fix up the posing and I might play around for lights a bit more as well. Okay, so I fixed up the posing for the three androids, remove the stand from 16, place the crow in his hand properly. And the other ones are kind of scattered around the front here, uh, making sure that when I take the photo, they're not overlapping each other. Uh, so this guy here, when he was closer, he was overlapping with the one at the back. So by moving it 
further back here we're able to create the empty space in the middle to separate them which is nice also place one on the far back right here which will be just visible in the image and just kind of helps to balance out the birds um, since this is meant to be kind of a midday photo with the sun well with the pink sakura I want to get a nice warm look um, so I've got the LumaCube 2.0 here with a warming gel and just the diffusing dome here I just place it on the um, front right just to highlight the faces and remove any shadows and to give them that nice warm sunny glowy look I've also taken out the ugly trees here I've done a couple of photos with them in and without and once we're on the computer we'll be able to have a look and see if uh, one is better than the other so now that we've got the image taken let's jump on the computer and do the final edits actually one more thing before we do jump on the computer I want to go over the other lights I use can't really get it in the shot with a camera but just for your knowledge there's one constant light directly above which I'll turn on and off now so you can see so off and on uh, so the purpose for this light is just a fill light all around the back here to remove any harsh shadows and then the other light that I'm using for the image is one on the left side over here which I'll turn on and off now this is just to highlight the front side of the androids so the front left side of the androids including 16's face uh, for the video I do have one more on the left corner which I'll turn on and off now however for the image I'm actually turning this one off so the majority of the light will be coming from the Luma Cube. Okay, so now that's the lights explained, let's jump on the computer and do the final editing. Okay, so here goes the image that we're going to be going with for the final calendar image. Um, I've done a couple of small tweaks in Capture One already just to the brightness, um, colors, and so forth. Nothing too major. Um, but the main editing that we need to do is going to be done in Photoshop here. Um, and it's just going to be replacing the white background here um, unfortunately I didn't notice when I took the photo that the background was slightly off uh, so we'll quickly touch it up now then the other part is just in the middle here just to smooth out that transition where the two bits of um, paper join uh, so to do this we're just going to get the um, lasso tool and make a quick selection and hopefully the auto fill tool will take care of it for us just right click fill and content aware since the background is pretty simple and this should work well okay there we go so that has generated some information for us I didn't go all the way down since down here it's kind of white and it was getting a bit of a pink color from the reflections anyway I feel like it blends in nicely and now for the middle part here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get the clone tool, increase the size a little bit, get a hardness, probably here, 10% should be fine. I'm going to drop the flow and the opacity, and just take a selection from the side and just clone down the middle. Do one from the other side, and just clone over and try and blend the sides together. Now that seam has completely gone and just looks like there's a little bit fluffy cloud or um, blossoms in the background. The next thing we want to fix up is get the clone tool again. This time we're going to make it very small. Hardness is increase a little bit and bring the opacity and flow back up. And we'll just touch up a couple of these little bit dots on 18's legs okay so yeah everyone's looking really good I think that should be it okay so I think that's basically all for the touch ups um, thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video please let me know in the comments below um, if you have any questions about the um, creation of the image and editing and yeah, uh, do like and subscribe, please. Cheers, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.